Hello, everybody. My name is Duncan Earl. I'm the president and the chief technology officer at Cubitech. And I'm going to be talking about the EPB quantum network today. I actually am sitting in one of the equipment hubs for this quantum network. So this is this is a, a, a actual equipment that's behind me that's containing some of the quantum equipment we'll talk about today. So I, I know this has been presented in past uh, quantum marketplace um, presentations, um, but uh, for those that haven't seen it, this is the first commercial quantum network in the nation. It is owned and maintained by a utility and internet, internet service provider here in Chattanooga, Tennessee called EPB. It is 100% um, uh, industry funded. It, no government funding went into making this commercial quantum network and it's really focused on supporting the needs of, of industry. And it does that by incorporating um, common use resources that many of us need uh, for our different applications in quantum. On the right side of this uh, slide, you can actually see some of the hardware components that are available to users. Um, these are just are installed in something we call equipment hubs that are distributed around the network, but they include things like quantum sources, heralded photon sources, entangled photon sources, uh, high efficiency detectors, superconducting nanowire detectors with measurement uh, optics in front of it that let you do uh, tomography and other uh, types of measurements. There's electronics and software that allow you to correlate with high precision uh, events that are occurring across the network. And then there's coherency control, which allows you to uh, ensure that your qubits are coherent across the network and that they can interfere. All of that hardware is provided by commercial companies. So it is commercial quantum devices that are backed up by, by vendors and, and warranties. Uh, EPB, if you haven't heard of them, is an incredible network uh, in Tennessee, incredible uh, utility in Tennessee that has over 600 square miles of optical fibers. They've dedica dedicated a cable consisting of over 216 uh, dedicated optical fiber strands that tie together uh, the multiple nodes on this network and give the users access to millions of dollars worth of equipment that they can configure for their applications. And that's all done through a subscriber-based uh, model. So what can you do with this, this network? The three probably most prevalent things that you can do with this network are to um, accelerate your own product development. You can uh, reconfigure the network for your specific application. So if you're doing QKD or you're doing quantum memory systems or whatever your product might be, you can use this infrastructure to, to really accelerate the development of that product. Because it's a multi-mode network, you can also collaborate with others. If you're developing a system that needs a very specific kind of source, another user on the network can provide that source and you can collaborate over the network um, to, to demonstrate or to develop your technology. And then most imp importantly, you can sell your network technology to, or you can sell your technology to users of the network. So you can deploy products. And one of the, the biggest customers potentially for new commercial products developed with this network is the network itself. Again, quantum memories are a great example. That's where we could incorporate a commercial quantum memory into the source for all the users to utilize. But obviously there's lots of other uh, products that could be sold to these same uh, network users. Um, this is the start of a commercial quantum network, but we know that uh, as technology advances, as new commercial products uh, arise, we can incorporate those into this network to make it better. This is kind of a, a quick look at our, our technology roadmap. Everything that you see on the bottom there is already provided uh, by the network. That's what will be a part of the network when it's released in July of 2023. And then those resources can be used by users to develop the technology that's a row above it. Uh, quantum memories, narrow line with configurable sources, phase lock uh, sources throughout the network and network simulators. With that technology developed, we can go another rung up and then another rung up and slowly claw our way up to the top where we can integrate lots of different quantum technologies together, whether they're communication sensing or computing technologies, Ultimately, this network needs to serve uh, all of those different types of applications. Uh, real quick look on the right are some of the companies currently involved in the, the network, but we invite many to come and join us. Most importantly, last slide here, I really hope others will come and, and see this technology. Uh, we have a tour and demonstration planned at the QEDC plenary session, which is March 23rd and 24th. Before and after that meeting, if you want us to get more of a, a private tour and have some discussions, give us some feedback on how you'd use that network, we invite people to a roundtable uh, session. And then uh, if you want to get dive deeper into the technical details of this network, we have some uh, technical papers that you can learn more about. The links to all of that will be in the uh, chat 
And you can also use these QR codes to register for the feedback sessions, register for the QEDC plenary, or look at those technical papers. And that is my overview. Thank you.